Hello and welcome to Woofboxing, the channel all about the Woofbox. Today we're going to look at the filter page. The Woofbox has a ton of filter options and features, so let's dive in. You get to the filter page from the sequencer by turning the encoder to the right until you see filter. And quick refresher, each lit key is a parameter and you change that parameter by holding the key down and turning the encoder. You can get a more detailed parameter name by holding down the button. So before we start, what is a filter? Simply stated, a filter is a tool that can remove certain frequencies from a sound, as well as add energy using resonance. The first parameter on the filter page is the filter type. The Woofbox actually has 10 different filters to choose from. I will go through these in detail at the end of the video. So for the rest of this demo, I am going to just pick just the first low pass filter. The next two parameters are cutoff frequency and resonance. You have to be careful going high on the resonance depending on the filter. The next one is the filter envelope generator depth. This is how much the filter envelope generator will affect the filter. With a value of zero, the filter envelope will not affect the filter at all. And with a value of 127, the filter envelope, which is below, will affect the filter fully. And quick tip, you can turn this to the left to get an exponential envelope shape. Now, one thing to note, the filter envelope on the woof box doesn't work like a regular filter envelope. It actually attenuates instead of adds. The pro for this is that the cutoff amount is always the maximum amount. So even if you have this at 52, it's never going to go above 52 regardless of the filter envelope or the filter LFO. And this can be useful when you're using the filter fading automation in song mode. The con for this is that it works differently than the filter envelope on most synths and using it can feel a little bit counterintuitive. Next is the LFO retrigger, and that makes it so the LFO will always restart when a key is pressed. Let's set that to on. So the next two parameters are cutoff to decay and cutoff to effect. The first one, cutoff to decay on key 7, will shorten all of the amplitude envelopes as you close the filter, and as you open the filter, it will open them. The next one, cutoff to effect on key 8, will open the sends for reverb and delay 1, when you open the filter and close those sends when you close the filter. So to show this, I'm gonna play a little pattern and you'll see that when the filter is open, I have a lot of effect and I have some longer envelopes. And as I close the filter while it's playing, you will see that the amplitude envelopes are gonna shorten and the send effects are going to lessen. So we're gonna go from a wall of sound to a more intimate kind of plucky small sound. So the next row of parameters are the settings for the filter ADSR envelope. So you have your attack, you have your decay, you have your sustain, and you have your release. So if I wanted a plucky type sound, I could do a sound like this. We can make it even shorter by tightening that release and that decay. Maybe just straight up turning these off. I was like a little bit of release. Something like that. And if you wanted to do something a little longer, we could do, let's see. Longer this, and we'll do a long filter attack. Very cool. And the last row is going to be the filter LFO. So you have the LFO shape, the LFO depth, the LFO rate, and a classic sample and hold. So on the 
shapes, you have noise, sine, triangle, saw wave, and square wave. And for the depth, this is how much the LFO is going to affect the filter. And if you go negative, it will invert the waveform. You can also select noise, which goes really well with the sample and hold on key 16. For now, let's pick a triangle wave. And we'll do, yeah, let's just go all the way so we can hear it. And you'll notice that if I play, you don't hear the LFO. Well, that's because we didn't give it a rate. So right now it is not moving. If you turn it to the right, it will be slower than one step. And it can be really slow. And if you turn it to the right, it will be faster than a step. So for example, this would be This would be half a step. And remember, you still have the LFO retrigger if you want it to retrigger on each step. And this LFO will go quite fast. So we can make some tremolo. Let's see, let's put this at, well, yeah, let's go all the way to get the speed down. Maybe, oh, what's happening? Okay, here we go. Okay, and then we'll just kind of dial this back a bit. There you go. And you still have your LFO retrigger, which you can turn on and off. Or we could do some filter sweeps too. So let's go with a, sure. Let's go, uh, yeah, let's go all the way. And then we'll go real slow. Let's say, yeah, about that. That's a little bit less than four bars. And last but not least, we have the sample and hold on key 16. Well, the sample and hold will sample a value each time it is triggered and hold it until the next time it's triggered. So right here, I have a repeating pattern. As you can see, it's very boring. You can use the sample and hold to introduce variations in your filter amount so the sound doesn't get boring. So for example, right now I have this repeating uh, pattern. We can go to the sample and hold. And let's say we're gonna set the LFO to noise. Let's make sure we have depth up here. Okay, negative works as well. That's gonna be the inverse, but let's go with that. And then uh, rate doesn't have to be on. So now it's given us this kind of like very odd sound because uh, it's using noise uh, way too often. So we just slow it down. it's already more interesting now we're going 127 depth here we don't have to do that see we have a little bit of variations and we can make it less often as well you could also sync it to the beat so this is in milliseconds so for us if we wanted to have a different value per uh, we should do 480 milliseconds, I believe. This is a um, 120 beats per minute. All right. So it should give us a different filter value for each one of these nodes. There you go. Let's make this full so we can hear it better. Very cool. Now, one thing that is interesting is to desync or have a different value for the LFO rate and the sample and hold. So this I'll just leave at 480. Actually, you know what? Let's just do some random something and... Oh, 
you know what, let me not use noise, let's use triangle. So here it's going to repeat, but it's not going to be quite what you expect. You can come up with infinite different grooves. Alright, now I'm just getting carried away. So a couple things to know, the LFO rate and the LFO retrigger settings do not affect the sample and hold. The sample and hold retriggers on every note on event. And now let's demo all the filters. Since the encoder is stepped, I've decided to use the filter envelope to do the filter sweeps. So I'll just hit a key. And that's how we will demo the filters. There are two low pass filters available and these will remove high frequencies. Low one is a 24 dB analog type low pass filter and I don't usually go over 120 it can get a little crazy Low pass 2 is also a 24 dB low pass filter, but this one is self resonating and can scream at high resonance settings, so be careful. I think this might be my favorite one. Next are bandpass filters. There are four different bandpass filters available, and these will remove low and high frequencies. Bandpass 1 is an 18 dB analog style filter. It will self resonate but will be less harsh than bandpass 2. Bandpass 2 is also an 18 dB analog style filter. This one can self resonate and will be harsher than Bandpass 1 and can even distort at high resonances. Little screechiness there. Bandpass 3 is a 6 dB filter that can self resonate. 
it has a more analog, less harsh response than the Benpass Filter 4. Maybe one twenty is too high. Bandpass filter 4 is also a 6 dB filter that can resonate, but this one is harsher and also may distort at higher resonances. And then we have four high pass filters. These will remove low frequencies. High pass filter one is a 6 dB high pass filter. Nice. Let's see if we can push it. Ow. <laughs> nope. Ooh, yeah. Nope. Okay, 121. <laughs> so for a high pass one, let's just go to 121. High pass filter 2 is also a 6 dB high pass filter, but slightly more ringing can be observed in the output compared to high pass filter 1, and it may distort at high resonances. That is not what I meant to do. <laughs> high pass filter 3 is an 18 dB high pass filter. It's self resonating, but it will be less harsh than high pass filter 4. High pass filter 4 is also an 18 dB high pass filter, but this one has more ringing in the output compared to high pass filter 3 and may distort at high resonances.
And that is the end of this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for being here and ciao, ciao. I'm just gonna try something out real quick. Let's go to the global page and add a little effects to this, yes? Actually, let's go with delay. Oh. <laughs> Man, that sound is just awesome. Let's go double delay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that is my cue.